Hello everyone and welcome to an incredible game from round 4 of this year's Norway Chess. We are in the classical time format and this is Alireza Firuja versus Fabiano Caruana. Uh, if Alireza wins this game, uh, he is in a great position in the tournament. He's currently uh, number 2, Fabi is um, uh, leading the tournament and if Alireza wins, uh, he will take the lead and then of course if he wins all the games uh, until the end, uh, he can win the tournament. Same goes for Fabi, uh, since he's leading, if he, he, if he just wins, he will also win the tournament, but uh, also whoever wins this game uh, could be the uh, well could be world number two in the live ratings list Fabiano is currently world number three Alireza is world number two just behind Magnus uh, if Fabi wins he also gets that uh, number two spot behind Magnus so let's check it out Alireza has the white pieces uh, and he opens with e4 and Fabi uh, played something that he does not play often and of course he uh, wanted to uh, create a, as crazy a position as possible uh, pawn to e6 he went for the French defense which means that it's going to be a great game as you know that Alireza is, is a great attacker and French is one of those uh, defenses that you can really really attack so here pawn to d4 pawn to d5 knight to c3 knight to f6 the classical variation uh, e5 knight f to d7 and pawn to f4 so uh, all standard stuff here pawn to c5 uh, 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 going for uh, this uh, a a counter in the center uh, and now knight to f3 we have knight to c6 and now bishop to e3 so these are all top moves in the position nothing new being played here captures captures and d4 and now bishop to c5 is the most common move here fabi goes for uh, queen to b6 and it looks odd because you're kind of under the mask of the of the bishop here but uh, there's no good uh, discovery for this knight because queen just would capture bishop even if you play knight to f5 yes you defend the bishop but it's not that great i mean the the the, uh, the the knight on c5 isn't really doing anything you can still capture on b2 and it's going to be perfectly fine the knight is just being weird there and okay there are some tricky lines like knight to b5 now going for c7 but then bishop to b4 check and everything is perfectly fine if c5 now you capture on f5 bishop to d2 can even be played here and it's a crazy position but um, you, you don't gain anything by it so of course they both know this after queen to b6 uh, we just have queen to d2 offering the sort of the poison pawn you're hoping that it's going to be a poison pawn black of course if he knows his theory well uh, knows that uh, the best move here is to capture the pawn so queen captures some b2 rook to b1 uh, we have queen to a3 and now again uh, bishop to b5 is the move that uh, everyone plays here but alireza goes for knight c to b5 he attacks the queen and now he's threatening uh, knight to c7 check but this is also a pawn sacrifice because fabi just plays queen captures on a2 now he won two pawns and he's attacking the rook on b1 so now knight c7 check king to d8 and nothing really happening because the rook on d1 uh, on b1 is hanging so rook to d1 uh, Alireza getting uh, some nice development in for the price of those two pawns and now threatening knight to c7 check but just rook to b8 by Fabi we have knight to c7 check uh, uh, eliminating any uh, castling privileges that the black king has king to d8 knight back to b5 uh, and now knight to c5 and what can Alireza play here well he wants to get his uh, king to safety and then attack the black king which is now stuck in the center of the board with bishop to d3 uh, but Fabi's up to pawns uh, he really wants to trade down and enjoy his extra material and when you're up material the more you trade down the uh you know uh, bigger the material uh difference will be so knight captures on d3 queen captures and now uh, there are a couple of moves that uh, have been played here in this position but Fabi plays bishop to d7 it's a new move so now as of move 16 we have a completely new game uh, and Alireza played a move that uh, Fabi later described as a crazy move uh, because uh, well it, it's not easy to f figure out what to play here the problem is if you just castle uh, Fabi just has queen to c4 and any attack that uh, Alireza might have had is, is just gone if queen to c4 you have to trade queens here there's nothing better I mean you could play queen to d2 but it's a silly move a square for the queen you will just start trading everything so here best would be to, uh, to trade and then let's say knight captures b captures and even you get knight to d6 let's say bishop captures rook captures uh, it's nothing spectacular uh, yeah okay rook to d1 looks scary but rook to b5 you will put a rook on d5 and that's pretty much it nothing uh, happening here bishop captures on a7 black can even give 
give up one pawn, let's say rook d5, and everything is perfectly fine. So, uh, but again, this is probably what's best for, uh, for Alireza. After bishop to d7, Alireza played knight to d6, and okay, Fabino has to deal with this so-called crazy move. Uh, but uh, he also said that he did not understand the move. Okay, for the moment, the queen does not have access to the c4 square, uh, but that's pretty much it. Fabi just captured with e captures and now plays queen to c4. So, uh, what's the idea? Alireza goes back, queen to d2, and now Fabi has all sorts of moves. You can uh, uh, remaneuver the, the rook on the c file, you can uh, trade once in the center. I mean, you want to eliminate as many attackers as possible, you want to uh, play f6, you want to play uh, moves like that, king to e8 even. Uh, he started with f6, which of course uh, now uh controls the e5 square at some point you might even uh, play e5 uh, but now comes knight captures on c6 b captures on c6 creating this massive center and at, at some point you will probably even win the d6 pawn queen to a5 with check king to e8 and now queen captures on a7 check and now fabi plays a move that is truly spectacular he plays rook to b2 and it is by far the strongest move in the position uh, offering a full rook to alireza if alireza wants he can just play a uh, queen to a8 check and pick up the rook on h8 that's not the absolute best way to play this the best way to play this is as usual the boring way rook to c1 yeah, you just defend the pawn, you, you offer the pawn back, and, uh, okay, black maybe can keep some advantage, let's say queen to b4, king to e2, now rook to g8, so if you now play rook, uh, queen to a8, check, you have king to f7 defending the rook, but, uh, you know, not uh, nothing special. Uh, however, Alireza accepted the challenge, he played queen to a8, check, king to f7, and queen captures on h8, and now, what is Fabi's idea? Well, Fabi's idea is, how are you stopping checkmate? Queen captures on c2. What is what is going on here? Uh, we've reached a position from the thumbnail. How can Alireza play this? Uh, well, bishop to d2. Of course, this stops the mate in one threat. Uh, now comes queen to e4 with check. King to f1. Queen to d3 check. King to e1. And now, okay, the uh, bishop on d2 is defended. But also, Fabi defends the pawn on h7. And there's no counterplay here for Alireza. The queen has no moves. The rook is Silly on the d1, this rook is stuck uh, on h1, uh, c5 by Fabi. Now c4, c3 is coming, and if Alireza doesn't have anything to throw in between those two moves, uh, it's game over. So Alireza could try something like queen to a8 to get the queen back into the game, uh, but just bishop to b5. Well, how are, how are you stopping this? If queen to b7 with check, you, you, sorry, if queen to b7 with check, you can even go to g6. And if f5 with check, you can even play king captures on f5. There's nothing here. Rook to f1 is po impossible because of queen captures on f1 checkmate. So uh, Alireza tried h4 instead. Uh, he, he he wants to create some weaknesses here, but Fabi is just too, too fast. Bishop to b5, uh, king to f2, you have to give back the rook, otherwise you're getting checkmated. Rook captures on d2, rook captures, queen captures on d2 with check. King to g3, and now queen to e3 with check. King to h2, queen captures on f2 with check, on f4 with check. This is now a, a, a an absolute feast for Fabi. He will just gobble up all of the pawns. Yes, he's down the exchange, but I mean, look at all of those black pawns. King to g1, uh, we have queen to d4 with check. King to h2, uh, and now queen captures on h4 with check. Uh, king to g1, we have queen to d4 with check, king to h2, and now, uh, of course, Fabi cannot just uh, repeat moves, otherwise it's going to be a draw, queen to e5 with check, king to g1, and queen captures on d6, so j Fabi just cleans off the entire board, and uh, now he's up five pawns, that's not something you hear very often, even if you're down a piece, you 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 are very rarely uh, up five pawns, and here, okay, Fabi's down the exchange, but five pawns. Uh, and uh, Alireza could maybe dream of continuing this game with something like Queen Captures on h7, and now you kind of hoped maybe Fabi plays a bad move and you do something. You do have a Queen and the Rook, but the, the Black King can just enjoy himself there. Like, you, you, you can keep that pawn defended and just advance these pawns to victory. It's, uh, it's that simple. However, Alireza played Rook Captures on h7, and now Fabi has a way of ending the game with a single stroke. Uh, so feel free to pause the video and try to find the absolute best move for Fabi and pretty much the only winning move uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, realizing that you kind of have to defend against checkmate here. Rook captures on h7 would be checkmate, uh, on g7 would be checkmate. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, 
uh, it is queen to f8. This is what Fabi played, and he was in this position on move 38 that Alireza Firuzja resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. So it's uh, uh, definitely the best move because it forces a queen trade. Uh, the problem would be if you played something like queen to g3, which kind of does the same job, uh, but then you allow queen to c8. And now uh, it's very hard to actually win this because uh, if the queen ever moves from the defense of the g7 pawn, you have all sorts of uh, ideas here. Also, the bishop might be hanging and uh, th there's just nothing good here. If you uh, if you try something like queen to e1, check, king to h2, let's say queen to e5 with check, king to h1, now king to g6. Uh, uh, okay, you can maybe play queen to h8 if, if going after the pawn and then something like f5 to defend it. But it, you would still have to work very very hard for your meal after uh, this queen to f8 move uh, there's just nothing here and you have to trade queens and you resign here like queen captures king captures and th there is no counterplay here you, you you cannot even dream of achieving anything here it's it's merely a matter of pushing pawns that's it uh so yeah uh, very nicely done by Fabiano Corwana, who is not only uh, who has not only uh, not only extended his lead in the tournament, but is also the new world number two on the classical ratings list uh, in the live ratings. Uh, we're gonna check that out. So uh, here we have the uh, the results of the other games. Magnus Carlsen defeated Gukesh. Uh, it was a draw in classical. Then in Armageddon, Gukesh was winning, but then Ma Magnus was able to uh, take the win with the black pieces. It was a uh, I, I think. Uh, uh, okay, Gukesh maybe knew that he was winning, but he knew that uh, uh, he also had to win. So that's, uh, I don't know, maybe that put a little bit of extra pressure. Magnus was was happy with a draw, uh, but it didn't really mean anything. Magnus was completely lost, but then in the end, uh, Gukesh just blundered and Magnus won. Uh, Hikaru defeated Anishigiri, also in Armageddon. Uh, so very nicely done by Hikaru. Wesley so defeated Ari Antari. Fabi, the only one who win, won his game in classical time format. Alireza uh, Firuja <laughs> also played only four classical games, so he does not draw in classical. And Shakri Mamidyarov uh, won a spectacular game uh, against Nodibek Adusatorov uh, also in uh, Armageddon. And for those of you who are wondering what does this mean for the for the standings, there you have it. Fabiano Corwana now leading with 10.5 points uh, ahead of Hikaru with 6.5. So even if Hikaru wins the next classical game and, Hikaru lo and uh, Fabiano loses the next classical game, Fabi will still be leading the tournament. That's how good uh, Fabi is playing this. He won all of his uh, in, uh, matches. Uh, Hikaru in second. Uh, Alireza uh, in third with six points. Uh, Gukesh with five and a half. So it was a pretty tough break for him to lose against Magnus. Anish uh, and Wesley and Noderbeck with five uh, in fifth, sixth, and seventh. In, in eighth place, Magnus Carlsen with four and a half points. Uh, Shakir Mamidyarov uh, in ninth place with four points. And Ariantari last place with two points. And as we uh, as promised, uh, the live ratings list, there you have it. Fabiano Corwana, the big winner of the tournament, currently on plus 14.9. Uh, just in this tournament, uh, uh, jumps up four four places and uh, overtakes uh, a lot of people. But now even Alireza Firuja. So now uh, the the current uh, is uh, Magnus Carlsen, Fabiano Corona, Alireza Firuja, Hikaru Nakamura, world number four in classical, Ding Liren, the world champion, uh, world number five. Then uh, okay. Uh, Anish uh, keeping it keeping it very solid, uh, not losing, not gaining points. Uh, and okay, we have some uh, other changes here. Uh, Mamedyarov also on, on minus five. Uh, so you know, uh, pretty pretty uh, pretty interesting stuff happening. We'll see uh, if this uh, okay. Uh, there's no way for Fabi to actually overtake Magnus in, in this tournament. Uh, but if he wins all of the games uh, in classical time format, he might get very very close to 2800. I don't know if he can actually break it, but we'll we'll see. He's playing incredible chess. Uh, anything anything can happen, I guess. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Very, very strange uh, opening um, uh, choice for for Alireza. Uh, he he probably wasn't expecting the French defense, and then he just uh, you know went uh, went uh, all in. Uh, that first pawn sacrifice is a very well known one, and it's a very safe pawn sacrifice. But the second one uh, against a player like Fabi that was definitely a deadly dare. Fabi accepted it, and he uh, grabs the full three points. Uh, so yeah, once again, really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Michal Sakarias, David Gasparian. Brendan Fukuda, Niklas Wolf, uh, and Andaras Felinus for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing uh, the coverage of this spectacular event uh, until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.